No matter how hard we try, there are always more things to do than we can possibly fit in our days. It might get overwhelming at times. I myself have a day job working 8 to 10 hours a day, Monday to Friday, next to creating data science content on YouTube and doing my ongoing computer science degree. So how do we create a system that supports us in everything we do? So today we are here with Peter. Peter is a productivity YouTuber and he's going to help us with building a system for us to keep track of all the things that are going on in your life work study side project or other things so yeah let's get to it hi peter hi too thanks thanks for having me this is a good topic to talk about yes definitely so recently i made a poll on my channel and almost 80 percent of my audience actually is learning data science on the side next that's to a lot. my full-time job yeah that's a lot and i was yeah i was not alone so this is gonna be a very helpful thing to talk about so peter tell us about how to actually build a system for all of the things that we need to do and how to keep track of that. Totally. I think, first of all, you do need to have a system. I'm glad you bring up that word because a lot of times people are just improvising, right? They have their work, they have their studies, they have a side project, and they're kind of just working whatever they feel like working on at the moment yeah. or whatever has a deadline or, you know, something that randomly popped up in their brain. But it's much calmer in the end and you're much more likely to achieve your goals if you have a plan, if you have a system that you know what are the things that you want to do and you know how are you going to do them and you periodically do something little planning to make sure that you stay on track. Um, what do you do now? Yeah, at the moment, I just, uh, I use Notion for some of the things I do, for example, on YouTube, mm. planning uh, my, my content. Also, some of the things I do, for example, in data science, uh, building a cheat sheet for myself just to refer to them. Yeah. Um, or if I want to kind of like research on a particular topic in data science to prepare for my own project. So that, that, that kind of goes well. But for other things in my life, for example, uh, yeah, for my work, I have separate notepads like just written down some things and then I forgot about what I have to do for other things also shopping like fitness and like random admin things I, I also always like behind my my own to-do list so yeah that's what I'm doing now and what what do you suggest people to use in terms of tooling to get this done more efficiently yeah well I'm glad you brought up notion because that's a great place to start and I kind of had to laugh a little bit when you mentioned that you have different notepads in different places and everything because one of the things that you want to do with a system is you want to have a place for everything. You don't need to have all of the things that you're keeping track of living in the same place, but you do need to know for every particular thing, for example, your to-dos, where, where do your to-dos live? Or your research material, where does your research material go? You should know where every kind of thing goes. It doesn't need to all be the same place, but since you did mention Notion, it's a great one, a great app for people to get started with because it is free. Maybe people are familiar with Notion. There might be better apps out there for certain kind of things, like for example, maybe for to-dos, you could have a specialized to-do app. But one of the great things about Notion is it's very flexible and you can do a lot of things with it. And in fact, we prepared a template for people in Notion. That's absolutely cool. Like really nice. We're gonna talk about this template in a bit. And this template is gonna be free for you to download in the description. And this is a starting point for you guys to uh, start thinking about how you can build such system. And we're gonna walk you through, okay, what are the concrete steps that you can take to, to build a system like this on Notion? That's right. And step one is, I always tell people, get really clear on what it is that you want. So get really clear on what your goals are. Clarify your goals if I had to say it really succinctly. And a lot of people don't take the time to do this, which is a real shame. A lot of people have this like vague sense of, I want to become a data scientist, right? Or I want to become more fit. Yeah, and or I want to learn Python. Or I want to build a portfolio project. That's yeah. very vague. <laughs> very vague and hard to act on. So I always tell people, why don't you write down as specifically as you can? And you guys can do this now or, you know, after you watch the video, download the template and then do people can do it. Write down really specifically what your goals are. Don't just have it in your head, but also write it down. So rather than saying, you know, build a data science portfolio, it could be like, do you need a specific addition to your portfolio, right? Or do you want a portfolio for a specific kind of job that you need to display? So try and get really, really clear on those goals. Yeah, for example, I would think like building a dashboard, a data visualization dashboard in Python is a more concrete uh, goal than just saying, okay, I want to build a portfolio. Right. Um, or you want to learn intermediate level Python uh, so that you can uh, start like a doing a lot of data wrangling or a little bit machine learning with it and that is a more concrete goal, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I really appreciate that example saying I want to learn Python up to an intermediate level because a lot of the times, you know, I see people saying something like, one of my goals is to learn Python. And I'm like, that's great. That's like saying like, I want to learn Japanese. Okay, but like, do you want to learn to speak Japanese or do you want to learn to write it? Yeah. Or do you, what do you want? And those things are different. And if, if you have in mind very specifically what your goal is, it'll be easier to figure out what you need to do about it.
And, and th that's actually step number two, is to figure out what are the action steps? What, what are you actually gonna do about it? So let's say someone has the goal of wanting to get a job at a top company, top software company in, in data science. What might be some action steps that people could take? Um, yeah, I, I think it's, a, it's quite a, like an ambitious goal and is it boils down to so many different things, I think. Um, so the action steps could be, firstly, that you have a, a like a very nice CV and a resume that you can send out to a number of recruiters, yeah. I guess. And to build uh, like a CV like that, you actually need to put in the work to maybe create your own portfolio that's convincing enough for the recruiter. Yeah. Maybe you also need to connect with some people that you know in your network, for example, to, to let people know that you are looking for a job. Yeah, so it's just a lot of different things. And I think a lot of things that are probably not, not in our control. And how, how do you actually uh, connect the goal with the action and how do you actually keep track of the actions? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because often if people do take the time to write down a list of their goals, which you all should be doing in this you know Notion template or somewhere else, right? That's not enough because just having goals doesn't mean you're gonna achieve your goals, right? You need to take action. And so by coming up with some of the action steps, like the examples that you just gave, right? Making a really nice resume, maybe sending your resume off to some potential recruiters in your field to get feedback from them. Those are actionable things that you can do. And what you really want to do is for each goal that you have, write down maybe one, two, three, you can come up with more, but let's say one to three action steps that are gonna help you reach that goal. And you wanna kind of connect those to the goals, right? Say so I'm doing these actions to achieve this goal that I have. I also wanna make sure people think about goals in different parts of their life, by the way, because we're, we're talking about work right now, but one, of, one yeah. of the problems you're saying is people have a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah, that's absolutely my problem. When I set a goal for myself, for example, get a new data scientist job, for example, which is probably what I'm gonna do in the next year. <laughs> I'm not sure. Spoiler. But uh, uh, yeah, if for a goal like that, you definitely want to focus on it, but also you have to kind of like realize that, yeah, there are also other things that are going on as well. I have my own study that I need to finish. I have YouTube videos to make and I have my fitness plan or whatever. Then it is also a constraint on your time as well yeah. and your energy that, uh, yeah, you cannot do everything at once and it's just gonna burn you out basically. So indeed, it's, it's, it's a very valid point that you brought up that we need to take into account all other things as well. All the other things. And, and we gotta make sure that when you're doing this exercise where you're first writing down the goals that you have and then for each goal you're writing down some action steps, some to-dos, whatever you want to call them, you do this comprehensively. So you think yeah. about what career goals do I have? What volunteering goals do I have? Side project goals, health goals, like fitness goals, you know, maybe relationship goals with people is one that I I think people tend to forget about that, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> that's something that's gonna take a big part of your time, right? And it's really important to be comprehensive there because like you're saying, if you're really focused on all your career goals, then you might find that you're spending a lot of time hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your family, working on your fitness, and you're like, oh, I'm not achieving all these career goals. Like, yeah, you have to spend time on those other things as well. You want to spend time on those other things as well. Yeah, because all of these different aspect of your life is what makes your life full, right? You, you, you don't want to um, like just fall off your, your wagon for a specific thing and then you kind of like ignore your health um, and ignore your relationships. That is a very big risk when you are pursuing something a little bit more ambitious. Yeah, so once you have a sense of all of these different things that you want to do in the different parts of your life, you really want to make sure you write that all down. And so that's where this notion template comes in that we've made for people. They can write down their goals. They can write down for each goal and they can connect this. What are the action steps? They can do this for all the different parts of their lives. And so they'll have like one place where where we have listed what, what do we want and how are we gonna achieve it, right? But there's a third step that people need to work on because you were mentioning this earlier, what often happens when people set their goals? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll just forget about it after one or two weeks. I'll just follow the, the goal. For example, read a chapter on hands-on psychic learning and TensorFlow book. And then I just realized that, okay, two months has passed and I haven't really actually done it. I actually finished it. <laughs> so yeah, yes, it's a very, very common thing that I think a lot of people also brought up on, on the comment section on my channel that, okay, I started learning data science six months ago and for whatever reason, uh, now I'm starting over again. And I wonder why it is the case Case. Is this because, yeah, we, we haven't really kind of tried to stick to the plan or is it because of some other things that just carry you away? So with this problem that people commonly have and I definitely have as well, what is the solution to to keep us on track? What yeah. do you think? You really need to stay in touch with your goals. Your goals are another word to use as intentions, right? What you intend to do. For a lot of people, they get motivated. They get a burst of motivation and they're like, that's great. I'm going to write down all my goals. This sounds, you're nodding. This sounds familiar to you. So you're going to write down all your goals. Very ambitious. <laughs> but that's great. But that's great, right? And so you have this enormous list of goals 
and you have this enormous list of actions that you're gonna take to achieve your goals and then life gets in the way, you get busy at work and two weeks later completely forgotten about it. So we wanna make sure that we avoid this and the way to avoid this is with what I call a weekly review. You can also call it weekly review and planning. Take a little bit of time once a week. I often recommend people like do it on like a Sunday, for example. For most people, Sunday is a great time to do it. And this takes maybe half an hour. You, you can do it as fast as like 10 minutes if you really wanted to. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer if you've not done it in a while. But for me, usually I would say like maybe 20 to 30 minutes for me. You sit down and you literally just ask yourself, hey, what are all the things that people have communicated with me about this week that I need to do? So someone sent you a message on Slack or Teams, or someone sent you an email and you need to do something. Go through all your inboxes and like write down all the things that you need to do, right? Then take a look at your wherever you're keeping your list of to-dos and just make sure that that's all up to date. Maybe you already did some of the things, just cross them off. Maybe there's new things that you come up with you still need to do, write them down. Then yeah. take a look at what's coming up this week. What do I need to do this week? What are like deadlines? And yeah. make a little plan. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. And and I try to do that at some point uh, in, in my own in my own system as well. But then I, the thing is, I didn't have time to make the review. Yeah. And what do you do then? I, I just felt so bad about that because I missed this review. Yeah. And the whole week after, I kind of feel like I'm not ready for this. I don't have a plan yet because I haven't figured out uh, if I'm still on track or right. yeah, whatever else I have to do. So yeah, how do you do that uh, when you don't actually have enough time to do a weekly review? Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like doing a weekly review is a good thing. I should be doing this. I should be taking a look at, you know, what's coming up, what have I already accomplished, you know, make sure everything is up to date, but they don't get around to it. Um, it's like with building any habit, you can just start really, really small. So I was I was just telling you earlier, like with my meditation ha habit, I try to meditate for 30 minutes a day, but it doesn't always happen. It usually happens, but it doesn't always happen. So sometimes yeah. it's 9 p.m. and I'm like, oh, I haven't meditated yet today. <laughs> and then I don't really want to sit down for half an hour, but then I go and I'm like, fine, fine, fine. I'll, I'll do it for five minutes minutes or 10 minutes, you know? And I just start doing that like a very small way. And then I always can get myself to do it because five minutes for some reason always feels fine, even though 30 minutes doesn't. And it's the same thing with the weekly review. If you feel like that's a lot of work, okay, don't, don't make it into a big deal. Literally just sit down and see what are my deadlines this coming week? What do I really, really need to do? And make a list of that and make a little plan. This I'm gonna do Monday, this I'm gonna do Tuesday. And that's it. That's your weekly review. Is it gonna also be like a time blocking kind of exercise for you as well? Totally depends on your personality and on your circumstances as well. Like for example, you work a full-time job. I work for myself. So I'm gonna have a lot more flexibility in my schedule than you, you know? Um, you're probably gonna have more meetings than I do. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think I think I'm fairly fairly confident in this, and so that's tricky. Personally, I just assign tasks to days. So I just say Monday I'm going to do this and this and this. Tuesday I'm going to do this and this and this. And I, I don't block off specific amounts of time because there's not that many demands from other people on my time. Like I have a very flexible schedules. So I don't really need to do that. But if I were working in a corporate setting and my days are all filled with meetings, then I might actually block off my time, even if just so that people cannot book a meeting with me at that time, just yeah. so I can sit down and do two hours of really focused work. Yeah, also for people who are very good with, uh, good at procrastinating things like me. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> then yeah. definitely it helps to be able to just see it on my calendar right. and then figure out, okay, then I have to actually do this or I will have to move it uh, like further if I don't get around to this now. Yeah. So I have this uh, very serious issue with procrastination. Right. So sometimes for me, like setting the goals and also having this kind of like deadline for myself is really, really good. And how do you think about also putting some kind of deadlines for yourself with like timelines, yeah. so to speak, for your goals? Very helpful for some people, stressful for other people. I definitely have friends who are telling me like, Peter, come to me and tell me I need to do this work by Wednesday, you know, otherwise like whatever, uh, there's some negative consequence, you know, <laughs> some people need that motivation or like pushing from, you know, friends, family, whatever. Other people like for myself, I have a lot of intrinsic motivation, but I tend to get stressed quite quickly. So for myself, I don't set too many deadlines because they stress me out and then I do really bad work. So this is something for like the viewers to ask themselves is like, what kind of person are you? You know, are you the kind of person who needs deadlines? Kind of a kick up the butt to like, you know, do the work? That's me. Or that's you, that's you. All right, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are you more the kind of person where you like deadlines stress you out and you actually need to just give yourself some space. But the, either way, 
you do want to have some kind of plan. So whether you think of, okay, I'm going to add a particular project to my portfolio, you know, whether you think of, I'm planning to do it Wednesday, that's how I would phrase it. Or whether you tell yourself, no, I'm committing to do it on Wednesday, it's a deadline. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Either way, you need to have a place where you're making this schedule, right? And so one of the nice things in this Notion template that, we, that we've got for people is there's actually a place to do that as well. So it's kind of a chain, right? It's like we have the goals, the things we want to achieve, then we have the action steps, how we're going to achieve these things. And then we have a little schedule. And so we can assign each action step to a specific day or a specific week or whatever, just yeah. to really remind people to work on them. Yeah, that's a very nice framework to kind of like tie everything together. Like really you can see how your goals are actually, yeah, you are on the pro progress of like achieving your goals because you have done this thing, you have accomplished this action today or tomorrow. This is very, very helpful. So thanks for all these tips, Peter, and also thanks for the for the template that you, that you designed for us. So if you want to try out this Notion template for yourself, you can go ahead and check out the template down below. You can download it and fill it in for yourself. Don't tinker with it too much. Fill it in, but no tinkering with Notion. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, if you want to learn more about uh, how to get more organized and how to be more productive with different kind of tools and tech, check out Peter's channel. And specifically, we also made another video on Peter's channel with the two of us on the similar topic. So go check it out. And with that, I'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.